Hey everyone, it's Jessica from Pretty Prints and Paper, and it is that time where we start thinking about our setups for the next month. So it is the weekend before April, so that means that I'm starting to think about my setup. I don't usually plan that much farther in advance, so um, this is the weekend that I'm setting it up. Now, I am going to show you how March ended up for me and how I'm going to transition into April. So you can get a sense of how did I actually use the, the bullet journal versus um, what uh, I showed you at the way beginning. So uh, here's that reference page for all my monthly challenges. Uh, the monthly that I tried for March, um, I was really excited about it, and actually it didn't quite work out for me. I hardly ever referenced it. I did jot down some of my expenses, um, but it was a little difficult. Um, I uh, wouldn't see it or think to go back to it, so I'm going to try and adapt that for this month. Some weeklies. I change colors every week, as you know. The blank pages, they exist, and if I don't need to use them, I just uh, skip over. It doesn't really bother me if I have some blank pages in between. Uh, you can kind of see I can use this space for whatever I need it to. Another week, another banner. Sometimes I will jot down some notes uh, of quick to-dos on a post-it note and just stick it in my bullet journal. And here we are on the last page of my insert in my Traveler's Notebook, in my Foxy Notebook. So that means that I also get to transition into a new notebook. Um, typically I've used this large dot grid from Yellow Paper House on Etsy. And now I am going to switch over to a bigger insert, which is uh, the May Designs uh, notebook cover that that you can get on maybooks.com and um, the yellow paper house typically has 20 sheets and this one has 40 so I can um, use this for a little bit longer and since I am starting a new notebook I wanted to ground myself in some of the goals that I had for the year so I drew out my 16 for 2016 you might have seen this on my Instagram a couple months ago but I'm trying to keep it at the front of my mind and not let it be one of those New Year's resolutions that I let go after January. So um, I'm doing well on a lot of these as of now, which is pretty exciting for um, it being three months into the year. I am um, making some progress on a couple things, like I've gone trapezing, I am starting a shop, I've read two out of five books, so I am chugging away and I think it's partially due to the fact that I try to keep these goals at the front of my mind. So um, I skipped a page because I wanted to kind of have a fresh page. I messed up. I know I do that sometimes and so I flipped the page. Now here is my April monthly. I am on a quest to find a monthly setup that works for me. I've long skipped the drawing up the grid or um, using the, the list for keeping my appointments since I use Google Calendar, but I'm going to try this. I mashed up a couple things I've tried in the past. So in my the main thing are my top five priorities for the month so that I can ground myself in that way. And I usually use the goals that I had listed from my 16 for 2016 to help me hone into what it is I want to focus on for each month. Um, the tasks that I have for the month. Something unique is the my people section. Um, people are very important to me and there's, there's a couple things that happen so I tend to be that person who coordinates birthdays and gifts and things like that so those tasks will go into there. Um, sending a card to whoever will go into there and um, I also will add in names of people that I want to make sure I um, call or send a letter to or things like that to keep people as part of my plan. Uh, of course, errands to buy. And uh, I adapted this from last month, starting with this quote that I lettered in here. Um, 
it's part of a longer quote, but it's um, at the end, do not forget how much you love to swim. Uh, it's a busy time, uh, finals are approaching for my students and the grading is up and it's that point where you're like, I just gotta make it through. So I have to remember how much I love this work and that is the motivation to go through with it. Um, down here, I wanna track my expenses again in this list format. Uh, hopefully I can see some patterns or trends and try to get as few filled in as possible to stay under my target for my budget. The duly noted is vague and vague for a reason, mainly because I'm not sure yet exactly what I want to do with it. And so I'm going to leave it open. So maybe it's a funny quote someone said that day, or it's a memory that I want to remember. Anything that comes to mind, I can jot it down. Uh, here's some of the challenges I'll be doing this month. We haven't released Rock Your Handwriting for April yet, so that is coming and I'll fill that in. There are a bunch of fun challenges that I'll probably do for lettering, including the letter archive, so check that out on Instagram and see if you want to join in too. Uh, the five day week. I love this spread, so I'm doing it again. I outlined the the week with Tombow uh, dual brush pens and I just use them as a blending tip. I push the tips together and um, it creates this really cool blended effect. I added some rows so here are all the tasks that I want to do for that day and then this row I added for a bit of journaling, a bit of gratitude at the end of every day. Since I am an out of sight, out of mind person, my typical gratitude log never got filled out. So I am working on doing it this way that I can jot down something quick at the end of every day since I know I will look at this. This line at the bottom is actually going to be for my expenses so that I actually look at it, jot it down instead of saying, oh, I'll fill out the monthly log later. Uh, it sounds like it's pretty easy. I can just flip back and fill it in, but I think this will hold me a little more accountable. Uh, the shop is becoming more and more uh, work in terms of setting up and launching, as well as I am getting more work and commissioned and work that people want me to do for lettering, which is exciting, so I needed a section for that. To cap it off is my weekend spread. I love having extra space on my weekends. Probably the same reason why people love dailies, so um, that gives me a lot of space to work with. And then this last page in the past I've used as a weekly review to look at how what the week looked like for me. And now with the blog and stuff getting into gear. I'm using it as a dedicated planning page for my blog, for my social media. I tend to use the weekend as a time to look at what's coming up and doing a lot of preparation for the week so that I have a little bit more time during the week after work. And there you have it, my friends. That is my bullet journal for April. So stay tuned on Instagram to see how that evolves over time. I will, of course, do another flip through at the end of the month so that you can see how it actually gets used. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up or give me a comment, subscribe to the channel, whatever you want to do, just enjoy it. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.